So my name is Olive Jones and my job is Director of People at the National Housing Federation. Um, so my role, obviously, the name gives it away, is about um, putting into place strategies, initiatives um, to enable people, staff, to do the best um, job that they can do and to be the best that they can be. It means a lot to me, um, obviously I'm black, um, my parents uh, both uh, came from the Caribbean um, my father came in the late 50s, um, not, not on ring rush, but he came in the late 50s and then my mum joined him two years later and um, they had a struggle, a real, real struggle. Um, I um, went to school in the 70s and um, I had a struggle at school um, because um, back then, um, you know, you endured a lot of racism and not just from school colleagues, but teachers as well. You know, like I can remember a specific example where um, I asked the teacher if I could go to the toilet to wash my hands because they felt really sticky. Um, because I've been eating sweets in class and um, I never ever will forget that teacher's response was what do you want to wash your hands for you can't your hands aren't dirty you can't see if your hands are dirty and I remember just sitting there I was so astounded and you know I did nothing with it I didn't go and talk to anyone I didn't tell anyone in the family but I was just so astounded Um so you know black the fact that moving several years forward we celebrate and when I say we it's a national thing we celebrate Black History Month for me that's fantastic because you know there are a lot of black people who have um, achieved loads and made life better um, for myself and you know for my daughter and I think it's fantastic that we've moved to celebrate that background is um, Black Caribbean. So both of my parents come from a place called Clarendon in Jamaica. And how do we celebrate it? Well, I mostly celebrate it by um, the food. <laughs> I absolutely love Caribbean food. So about once a month, I, I will get up at the crack of dawn and I'll just cook a load of Caribbean food and um, invite some friends around so share and chat and eat and um, that's really important to me that you know and for my daughter as well that she understands Caribbean food and um, so so that's really good that's one way I, I celebrate and um, I've celebrated by going to the Caribbean a few times um, and you know touching base with family and getting to know my roots and what what it's all about um, as a family we definitely um, celebrate so if there's a family do because it's someone's birthday or anniversary etc you can guarantee that the food will be tons and tons of delicious Caribbean food so that's how we tend to mark our, our heritage I think diversity in any working environment is absolutely crucial and what I mean by that is if you don't have diverse views, ideas, you don't get creativity and I think you always do the things you've always done which means you'll always get what you've gotten and, and I think diversity really does help to change that. You know, and, and I can remember um, when I first started working in, in banking and, and some HR roles and I'd go to, the, go to a meeting and the first thing I would do is I'd scan the room to see if there was anyone else like me in the room. Sometimes it just wasn't. And I can promise you, 
barely said a word and I'm not a person who keeps quiet I'm quite outgoing and I like talking but I can promise you you know I scanned the room and particularly in banking the room was filled with middle middle-aged white men so I wasn't gonna put my you know head on the parapet or, or speak up because I just felt quite intimidated if I'm honest and just like there's no one here else like no one else here who looks like me or sounds like me so you know what I'm just going to keep quiet and I always remember like when these meetings were over you know I'd go and sit with my manager who I was more used to and familiar with and um, just say oh these are my ideas and he used to say well why didn't you say that in the meeting and I I was a bit lippy, so I'd probably say something like, well, why do you think I didn't say anything in the meeting and, and, and leave it at that? So I, I think for organisations that don't have a diverse board or don't have a, a diverse senior team or a diverse group of managers, they're losing out on such creativity. And particularly if the work you do is to provide a service to a diverse community, how on earth can you be getting it right if you don't have diversity in the workforce? I think that change takes a while. And often you hear about equality, diversity and inclusion. And I think the key word is inclusion. And I don't see that happening for a while yet because um, if I think about the length of time it's taken to make some real progress um, I, I just don't think it, it will happen as quickly as people want it to happen and you know there are people black and white and Asian um, who want things to change um, and want things to change quickly um, but the key here's the key thing for me is if you have a look at and, and this is in no way reference to the National Housing Federation because I think um, this organisation is quite diverse and really committed to equality, diversity and inclusion but if you have a look at organisations in the UK and you, you look at the makeup of the board and you look at the makeup of, you know, your executive team or your leadership teams. They are very, very underrepresented by ethnic minorities. But these board members, executive teams, leadership teams are the real decision makers and are the ones that can make real change happen. So I think that until you see a, a movement and real movement, um, you know, in those roles, those very senior roles, you know, you won't see the changes start to happen in a significant way.